Okay, let's continue our discussion. Let's have a sample problem. For the retaining wall shown in this figure, determine the lateral earth force at rest per unit length of the wall. Also determine the location of the resultant force. We're going to assume that the overconsolidated ratio is equal to 1. So this is the illustration for our retaining wall. So there is a water table. So before we can uh, draw the pressure diagram so that we can compute for the total force acting on the retaining wall, we have to compute first the vertical stress in the lateral pressure or the horizontal pressure for each depth. So of course, for the lateral earth pressure coefficient, we are given with k naught, which is equal to 1 minus sine phi prime. And if we try to substitute the value for angle of friction, so it gives us 0 0.5. So this is the value for our k naught or the lateral earth pressure coefficient. So let's start with the computation for uh, the vertical stress and the lateral earth pressure at rest, start with a z is equal to zero. So when z is equal to zero, basically our vertical stress is equal to zero, and of course our horizontal stress or the lateral pressure is also equal to zero because in this figure we don't have a surcharge. Then when z is equal to 2.5, this is z is equal to 2.5, so our vertical stress would be gamma times uh, the height which is 2.5 so that would be 16.5 times 2.5 so that gives us 41.25 kilonewton per meter squared so after we have completed for the vertical stress at z is equal to 2.5 we're going to compute for the lateral earth pressure or the horizontal stress so we multiply our vertical stress to the lateral earth pressure coefficient k naught and that would be equivalent to k naught is 0 0.5, our vertical stress at z is equal to 2.5 as computed is 41.25, so it gives us 20.63 kN per meter squared. Then when z is equal to 5 meters, so z is equal to 5 meters, so meaning to say the vertical stress would be the stress at this layer and the stress at this layer, so that would be 2.5 times 16.5, then plus 2.5 times this uh, unit weight this is saturated so 19.3 minus the unit weight of the water 9.81 uh, 9 so it gives us our vertical stress when z is equal to 5 meters so that gives us 64.98 kilonewton per meter squared then after we have computed for the vertical stress you can compute now for the lateral earth pressure or the horizontal force, and that gives us, uh, we have k naught sigma sub O, and that would give us, our k naught is 0 0.5 times our sigma sub O, which is the vertical stress, 64.98 kilonewton per meter squared. So the value for our sigma sub H, this is the lateral earth pressure, or the horizontal force, that is 32.49 kilonewton per meter squared. Since we have computed now our lateral earth pressure at rest or the horizontal forces denoted by sigma sub h, you can now draw the pressure diagram. So to draw the pressure diagram, this is the pressure diagram. To draw the pressure diagram, you just have to plot the value for our sigma sub h, the horizontal forces or the lateral earth pressure. So that would be start from 0, then 20.63, and 32.49. So we have here 0, 20.63, when z is equal to 2.5, then from there, you measure 32.49 from this point. So that gives us now, yeah, then you try to connect the points, you have now your uh, pressure diagram for this particular illustration. So since we don't have a surcharge, so it started from this point. So we have a uh, this a triangle for this pressure diagram at the start. However, if there's a surcharge, it will not. It is will start with a rectangle. So since there is a water table, so this would be you're going to also compute for the pore water pressure. So pore water pressure can be is equal to 
the height of the water table, which is 2.5 times 9.81, the unit weight of the water, and that gives us 24.53 kilonewton per meter squared. So for this one, that can be uh, drawn in this manner, or you can draw your pore water pressure from this point. So that can be, since this is 20.64, that can be located somewhere here. So that is 24.53. Or you can place that in that in this portion, 24.53. Or you can have this illustration and just separate the upper water pressure. It should be added to this uh, pressure diagram. So since we have drawn the pressure diagram, you can now compute for the resultant force acting on the retaining wall. To compute for the resultant force, you simply have to add all the areas in our pressure diagram. So that would be one, two, three, four. You have four areas. So we have here area one, at a rectangle, a triangle plus area two, which is a rectangle plus area three, a triangle. And of course, we have also uh, then plus we have the pore water pressure. So basically, you have now our uh, uh, basically this is now our uh, value for the total force per unit length of the wall. So the total force uh, per unit length of the wall acting on the retaining wall is 122.85 kilonewton per meter. So to locate the location of the resultant force or the total force, you can have denote that by Z bar. So to compute that one Z bar, that would be you're going to have your uh, moment. Reference point is at point O. Then you try to have the moment. So at point O, area uh, area of this times the distance from the center towards the reference point plus area of this times the distance from the centroid towards the reference point plus area of this towards the uh, times the distance towards the reference point and plus area of this times the distance from the center to the reference point and you simplify it gives us all over of course you have to divide by the total force that we have computed a while ago and if you try to simplify the location of the total force from the bottom of the retaining wall is 1.53 meters so that is our uh, illustrate, uh, illustration for our example then for, let's have, uh, after the lateral earth pressure, we have the second nature of the lateral earth pressure, which is the active lateral earth pressure. So as illustrated in our, uh, in our figure a while ago, as mentioned, as discussed, the active lateral earth pressure is a force, uh, the, the movement of the retaining wall is away from the soil. So the movement of the retaining wall is away from the soil. So for this one, if you're going to have this uh, active pressure, you're going to have, let's have the concept for Rankine. So for Rankine active pressure, so Rankine, this is the person who developed the theory, which is in 1857. It is a stress field uh, solution that predicts active and pressure earth uh, it assumes that the soil is cohesionless the wall is frictionless and the failure surface on which the soil moves is planar so for this one uh, for the Rankine active pressure so if we have uh, this illustration from this one, so this is the retaining wall. This is our soil, the backfill. So basically the movement of the uh, retaining wall is away from the soil. So it is, its movement is towards the left. So for that one, uh, for a wall which is frictionless, the horizontal stress is sigma sub h and the depth z will equal to K naught times the vertical stress when delta x is equal to zero. However, when uh, delta x is greater than zero 
and our horizontal force will be less than k naught times the vertical stress. So basically for this, the more circle corresponding to all the displacement of sigmas of uh, delta x is equal to zero and delta x is greater than zero are shown as circles a and b respectively as shown in this figure. So we have here the uh, present representation of the more circle. So basically, if the displacement of the wall delta x continues to increase, the corresponding more circle eventually will touch the more column failure envelope, and that is having an equation which is shear strength is equal to c prime plus sigma prime tangent of phi prime. So the circle marked C in the figure represents the failure condition in the soil mass. The horizontal stress then equals sigma sub A. So our horizontal stress is equal to sigma sub A, or this is referred now as the Rankine active pressure. So the slip lines or the failure planes in the soil will make an angle of for positive or negative quantity 45 plus phi prime all over 2 with the horizontal as shown in our figure. So this is an illustration for our, this is the uh, illustration for the slip, fail, uh, the slip, the failure zone of our soil and it makes an angle of 45 plus phi prime all over 2 positive or negative. So this is uh, the rotation of the wall above this point is in this position. So based on the Mohr circle, of course, we have identified the equation for the Mohr circle of the failure envelope a while ago. C is equal, S is equal to C prime plus sigma prime tangent phi prime. And we have discussed before that phi sigma sub 1 is equal to sigma sub 3 tangent squared 45 plus phi prime all over 2 plus 2 c prime tangent of 45 plus phi prime all over 2. So this is the equation for the major principal stress. And that major principal stress, based on the Mohr circle, as we discussed in soil mechanics, now that major principal stress sigma sub 1 prime is now equivalent to sigma sub O, which is our vertical stress. And the minor principal stress, which is denoted by sigma sub 3 prime, is equal now to sigma sub A, which is our Rankine active pressure. So basically, this is the equation now for our sigma sub O, the vertical stress, and the Rankine active pressure. So the Rankine active pressure is simplified as sigma sub prime O, K sub A minus 2 C, 2 C, C prime, the square root of K sub A. Take note that K sub A is equivalent to tangent squared, 45 minus phi prime all over 2. This is our Rankine active pressure coefficient. So this, uh, this is now the illustration for our Mohr circle, which touches our failure envelope having this equation. So this is an illustration for the Rankine active pressure. So basically on this illustration, we have the variation of the active pressure with depth for the wall shown in that figure. And we have to take note that when P, uh, sigma sub prime O is equal to zero, as Z is equal to zero and sigma sub O prime is equal to gamma times H at Z is equal to Z, uh, H. So the pressure distribution shows that when Z is equal to zero, the active pressure equals to negative two C prime, the square root of K sub A, which indicates a tensile stress that decreases with the depth and becomes zero at the depth Z is equal to Z sub C. Or you can have this mathematical expression from this equation. You can compute for this depth Z sub C, which is the depth of the tensile crack which is it now equal to 2 C sub prime all over gamma, the square root of K sub A. So from this illustration, when Z, as mentioned, when Z is equal to 0, our active pressure is equal to negative 2 C sub prime, the square root of K sub A. And when the depth decreases, our, uh, the active pressure becomes a 0 at depth z is equal to z sub c 
And this obviously, of course, compute that's